Hey guys, this is Butch, and I uh, hope you can hear me in here. We've got a lot of background noise today, but uh, this is one of my favorite places to come, and several of my other normal spots are having construction, and, uh, and the noise there is outrageous. As a matter of fact, normally I would even go outside here, uh, and uh, there's construction going on down the street, so you can hear dump trucks going on or going by over and over again. Today, we're going to be looking at a story, uh, not so much a story as a passage, that I'll be dealing with on Sunday in a more sermonic type way. And so we're going to be talking about it. You're going to be helping me as I go through this. But I also invite you that uh, when we're done, add some things to the comments. Email me. I'll put the email address at the end of this video. But I would love to hear from you to see what are some things that stood out to you. So stick with us while we look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. My favorite uh, coffee shops in Lexington, Kentucky, at Brevity uh, Coffee Shop, which is down in the distillery district uh, here in Lexington, which is kind of a, a, a really cool part of town. If you're ever here to visit, go see the horses first and then come and check out the distillery district. A lot of uh, kind of kind of neat things in this area. Uh, I'll be doing a, a story at Commonwealth City Church on Sunday morning. And uh, it'll be on our YouTube page. I'll also post it to my personal page. So if you want to uh, check it out, you can. Uh, and, and I won't be doing it STS to the letter, which you'll see happens a lot, especially during COVID. It's difficult to get people to turn around and talk to each other and ask questions uh, with everybody masked up. So it'll be uh, some rhetorical stuff and also some preaching stuff, uh, which is actually not my preference, but that's okay. Uh, in this story, Paul is writing to the Colossians, and, uh, and he's been talking to them about what God did for them, about the, you know, what, what baptism is, has done for them as far as a sign. Not that it's saved, but it's a sign of what something else, something else that, is, that has happened. Uh, and it's, there's a word here that's used as triumph. And it's kind of important for you to know that uh, Paul was a Roman citizen as he was writing this. He had a particular understanding of the word triumph that we do not know today. A triumph was a huge parade through the city of Rome for a general who had won a battle that gained land uh, for Rome where at least 5,000 enemy soldiers were defeated. And so that's going to come kind of at the end of this story. But here's our story from God's Word. And when you were dead in trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, Christ made you alive together with Him by forgiving us of our trespasses. He erased the certificate of, of debt with all its obligations that were against us and that were opposed to us by nailing it to the cross. He disarmed and disgraced publicly the rulers and authorities. He triumphed over them in Him. And there is our story from God's Word. So, well, I wonder what it might have been like to be these Colossians, and you got these folks who are, you know, telling you all this weird stuff, and, and, and basically you feel under some spiritual attack. And now Paul says that same power that rose Christ from the dead, he used to raise you from the dead, and your enemy is defeated. I mean, what might that have been like for them, spiritually and emotionally, to hear that? I, I think that could be a huge relief knowing that you've won the victory, 
right? And even though you're in this battle, uh, the war is not over. So let's look at this, just the very first verse here. When you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, Christ made you alive together with him by forgiving us of our trespasses. I, I, I love that, you know, we hear the word trespasses and it seems to be kind of a, you know, just kind of a, a catch-all phrase for sin, right? So I, I got kind of a trick question for you. Do we sin because we're sinners or are we sinners because we sin? Hmm. He, he, he says here, we were dead in trespasses. Uh, so when we hear death, we think of physical death, right? I, I wonder, what can a physically dead person do for themselves, with, with that one exception that we have in history? I mean, what, what can a dead guy accomplish for himself? If you, if you yelled at a dead guy a little bit louder, uh, would that, uh, you know, that, that extra decibels, would, would that get him to do what you wanted him to do? Hmm. What, what, are, what are the results of death as, as far as what we're able to accomplish physically when our bodies die? Yeah, and, and here, is he talking about physical death or is he talking about a different kind of death? Yeah, it reminds me of the, the story in the garden where, you know, God told Adam that you, you'll die if you eat the fruit. Yet when they ate the fruit, they didn't fall over physically. So I wonder what, what kind of death are we looking at here? Well, if, if, if we're looking at a spiritual death, what kind of resurrection are we looking at? And I, I love this little phrase, Christ made you alive together with him. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious, what what brought Christ to life after his crucifixion and burial? Yeah, it was was that that same power that raised Christ from the dead that that was used to raise us spiritually and eventually, right? Will will be raised physically. Uh, when, uh, you know, when, when we reach that point uh, in, in our lives. Uh, so I'm, I'm just curious there. What, what do we learn about power, about what was accomplished there, raising Christ and raising us? Hmm. I'm, I'm curious what might be some potential results of that power in an individual's life. He's, he's writing to them saying this, this power has raised you spiritually, right? I want you to keep that in mind for a little bit. And, and he said that this, this happened because Christ forgave us our trespasses. I find it interesting there. Up to this point, he's been talking to the Colossians, you, you, you. And now he's switched to Christ forgave us our trespasses. What might we learn about Paul's understanding of forgiveness here as he's talking to the, to the Colossians or writing to the Colossians? What do you see there? Yeah, it, it seems like he's including himself with them. It's, it's almost a brotherhood of the forgiven, right? So uh, through this forgiveness of trespasses, new life has, has come about. And then he goes on to say that Christ erased the, the certificate of debt with all its obligations that were opposed and against, uh, opposed to and against us by nailing them to the cross, nailing it to the cross. I'm, I'm curious, do you usually get rid of something by uh, nailing it down? Is that... You know, there's there's a lot of times when uh, I will study in my backyard and, and I'll have I'll have a book open on a, on my table on my back porch and I'm, I'm in kind of a windy area and uh, and I always have to take something and set it down 
to, to keep that from, from going away. The setting something down on top of that keeps it from going away. And yet, Paul says here that the way Christ took away our trespasses, took away specifically the certificate of debt, was by nailing it to the cross. What, what might that show us about this transaction? I mean, but, but I guess that's a, a, a starter question. Do you see this being a transactional kind of thing? And, and again, just to go back to the verse we looked at prior to this, can a, can a dead man do anything to make this transaction? Uh, of, of forgiveness of trespasses? Hmm. Now, it seems like an outside force would have to do that, right? And so here he says he took away this certificate of debt by nailing it to the cross. What might that tell us about what happened on the cross as far as this spiritual transaction having to do with sin? Yeah, and, and I love the I love the term. Now I learned this story in the Christian Standard Bible, uh, where it says he erased the certificate of debt, and then later on it says he took it away. Some other versions uh, started out differently, but I just love that erased because it. I mean, does does this seem to you to be kind of a, a bookkeeper's terminology? Yeah, it, it seemed like there was a debt. That, that could not be paid, and Christ took care of that. Hmm. Well, you know, we, we, we talked a little bit earlier about, uh, about this power that raised us from the dead, with, that Christ raised us from the dead together with Him. I mean, to, is, is that power still active in our lives today? I mean, was it only used for that one transaction of raising us from spiritual death? No. So if that, if that same power is available today, does, does that mean we might have victory over not just rulers and authorities, but sin in our life? I mean, what, what sins in a person's life might be greater than this power that Christ mentions here. What, what habits or even addictions that an individual has gotten into would be greater than this power? Hmm. Yeah, it, it, I can't imagine there's one that is, right? Greater than the power of spiritual death. So if this is greater than the power of spiritual death, how, we might, act, how might we access that today in our own lives? To, to have victory over things that, uh, that trip us up, that, that cause us to trespass. I love that word that, that's used in this passage. If Christ made us alive from death, how might he make us victorious over sin? And I don't know the answer. I'd love to hear some of what you come up with here. Yeah, and, and this, this transactional approach that he made on the cross of taking away our sins. Uh, is, is today, are, are, there, are there still times that we, we search for that certificate of debt and we look for those things that we've done wrong? Yeah. I wonder, is, is Christ's forgiveness complete? In our practical lives, in our day-to-day -day lives, how, how might this impact us today? If we have been forgiven, how might that forgiveness impact the way I live my life today? If that certificate of debt has been erased, and the obligations taken away by being nailed to the cross. I wonder if maybe I, I need to, you know, if I'm dealing with with condemnation from the enemy, 
right? And, and do you see a difference between condemnation and conviction? Yeah, conviction is just simply God's Holy Spirit showing me, okay, this is something I need to I, I need to work on in my life. I need to be, I've already been forgiven, but I need to walk away from it so I can be fully in compliance, fully in fellowship, I think is a better word than compliance. So I would love for you to look at this last verse, this disarming, and I'm probably going to do a video on this tomorrow just to, uh, just to add an extra video this week. But uh, I would love to hear from you about what you see in, this, in, in these couple of verses that, that impact your life. What are some things that you see that stand out to you? You know, one of the results of, of this forgiveness, this new life that Christ has given, is that I no longer have to live in defeat. I don't have to live like this enemy that's been defeated. And, uh, and that's a great relief and a great joy, isn't it? Well, this story is in Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. Again, uh, I'm going to put my email address at the end of this video. I would love to hear from you. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, uh, the five of you that watch this, uh, <laughs> I'm teasing, it's, it has amazed me how I've run into people who actually watch these things. Uh, but uh, I, I appreciate all you that take part in this. And you know, if, if you know somebody you think might uh, enjoy just digging into the Word a little bit, uh, in, invite them to, to come with us. And again, uh, feel free to email me or put a comment down in the, in the, the comment section on the channel. Uh, I'd love to, to hear your thoughts and uh, some of your reactions, some of the things that stand out. Till then, keep telling those Bible stories.